so we have four major activities main activity checkout activity payment, payment activity and dashboard, dashboard activity so so in the main activity the first thing that happens is the on create gets called which is this function okay so it sets a layout of the main activity the xml file and then adds the toolbar then it checks if there is internet and if there is internet it gets all the products from the from the internet uh, from, from the, the database, database main yeah. database yeah and then checks if there is any new product and it updates the cart if anybody press anything okay so recycler view you know what is a recycler view recycler view is uh, for the uh, it's a layout uh, to view the items mm -hmm. in the main activity and in the cart shopping cart and there is two kind of recycler view um, uh, list recycler view or grid recycler view Okay. In the in the uh, in the main activity, we use a grid recycle view, and in the cart, we use a list uh, recycle view. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the recycle view gets called, and it will show all the show items. All the items. And then we check if we in the shared preferences, we check if the shopping the, cart there is any item in the shopping cart. Oh, yes. and if somebody clicks on an item, so the add on item touch is this enough? It checks and then it adds the item into the shared preferences. Shared preferences editor, we add items, items. To, to the shared preference. And uh, so when we pull the items from the main database, the online database, it stores the items in the local database. The room. In the room database and this adapter dot set products updates from the local database and sets the products in the main file okay so check product it makes a post request uh, to check if there are any new products available or uh, it's uh, not only this the post the post not only check uh, check on if there is a available uh, product in the database but also if there is a, a removed product if we remove the item from mm -hmm. the database, yeah. also to be checked. Yeah, and then, then it will add, add either add, add or, or delete or delete. And uh, uh, either add uh, or delete from the main uh, main activity and from uh, the uh, card uh, activity, mm -hmm. shopping cart. Activity. Yeah. Yeah. So. If somebody closes the application, we still want to make sure that all the items are in the cart and nothing changes. Or if new items are added, it is updated. So when the user comes back to the app, he can surf. He can. This function is called on resume, on resume, and it checks if there is any new product or any product is deleted, and then it adds these products and updates the local room database and then adds the product to the main view. Main, main view. And the get products makes a post request to get all the items from the database. From the database. And this new pop function inserts new items which are added to the database. And this old pop function uh, deletes stuff. And this is just getting a random number. Is network available is the function which checks if there is network internet connection in the file. And then the menu, on, on create options menu, it creates a menu and it sets out the menu layout. And then in the menu there are two buttons. Uh, one goes to the profile, profile which is the dashboard dash. activity and the other goes to the home which is the main activity. Main activity. And then if somebody clicks on the checkout button, it goes to the checkout activity. Okay. And then we go to the checkout activity. So the first thing which is called from the checkout activity is the on create. 
so again the checkout layout activity checkout layout xml file is set then once we go to the checkout activity we again check if there is internet and if there are any new products added so that we can update in the the same thing what we did in the main activity yeah then again we open our shared preferences and we count how many items are in the cart and if there are no items it shows there there is nothing but if there are items then it it is going to uh, print out the name get get the image and then print out the name and all the other details the price yeah, yeah. so the price the item id the item name and the images and then we have some uh, coloring and other style style in india yeah. so now we have to check if the user is logged in so if the user is not logged in it will show a login button after all the items are uh, cart items are shown and so we open a google sign in options a google sign in client and a google sign in account so if the user uh, presses the button for sign in these functions are called and then the sign in like once the button is clicked so on click listener the sign in function is uh, run or called so what happens in the sign in function it gets the intent and starts activity for sign in yeah and if the sign in activity works if it's a valid then it calls handle sign in task and sends the task so inside handle sign in task it gets the result into a google sign in account object account and then it calls update the ui with the account information now in the ui then you can get all the details from the account information and then show all the details of the user and now the, that the user is logged in we can also show the total price and then we add a button which is the pay button yeah again we we check if there are any new uh, like at the top when on create happen we already check do the check product run call and this is the function which is a post request to check new products or see if anything is deleted okay so once the user presses pay he wants to make a charge so here we collect all the positions of the items in cart and the names of the items in cart and store them somewhere uh, here items in cart it as string format we also so uh, store the email and the user id of the user who's logged in and then if the user presses pay we then send the total price the items in cart and the user email to the next page which is the uh, payment activity so we, right now we put this here and we already set an intent here that goes to the payment activity so if the user presses pay the user will go to payment activity with these information total price items in cart and user name okay okay and if the user clicks on remove item from cart then this function is called 
and it removes the item by setting it to minus two. Minus two. So it will no longer show in the uh, okay. items in the cards. Now, if the user presses back button, it has to go to the home or main activity. And these are the two functions for the menu. This lay sets the layout for the menu. And here to are the two buttons, one for the profile page, which is the dashboard activity, and one for the home page, which is the main activity. Okay? okay. And again, there is this function to check if there is internet. So once the user presses pay, pay. it goes pay. to the pay. payment pay. activity. Now again, it starts with on create and it sets out the layout of the payment acti activity payment XML file and it gets the information, the total price, the user email, the signed in user and the items in cart from the previous page and stores them in this variables. Okay. okay. Then again, it checks if the user is still logged in and if it has any stored card information. Okay, and if it any stored card information, it gets the information from the stored card information and puts them in these variables. The CV is the expired date and etc. Yeah, and then this function is called if the user wants to save the card. So a post request is made and it goes to the database and tries to save the card details. Okay, get card. So the get card function gets the information of the card into the page. So yeah, it makes a post request to get uh, the card number, the expiry month, the expiry year, and the CVC. So if it is null, means there is nothing there, then... If it is not null. If it is not null, it means if there is uh, some, some items in the database, it sets, it gets the card number, expiry date, and CVC code. CVC code. And then it can set this in the card input widget. You know what is a card input widget? Yes. The, the, the widget, you mean the digit that we put in there. Card input, input widget. widget. Widgets. Yeah, yes. it's the input file. Input file. Okay. Or the digit number that yeah. you added to the card. Okay, so then when the user enters the card number and then presses pay, then the handle sub is called. Now the handle sub. Uh, if everything is correct, if the card token is valid, uh, if and with the card details, then it tries to make a stripe charge, so which will actually charge the user of the card, and then. Uh, if it's an error, it will give you an information. So then we come to Stripe charge. Uh, and then it gets the token, the name and the amount. And in the background, uh, it does a charge. And we send the total items ordered and the total payment, which is charged to the next page, which is the success activity. So the payment is success, then we go to the success activity. Here is the file for the charge. So it goes to Android uh, charge.php, which is uh, a file on the server, which makes the charge for the Stripe account. 
So it makes a post request with the Stripe token, the, the amount, and it gives you a result. If the response code is 200, which means the charge is success. And yeah. Yeah. So when the Stripe charge is called, it calls the post data function. And if the result is okay, it means that this, uh, the charge has happened and then you can go to the success activity. And then we call another post function, which is post data to, which saves the user email, the items in cart and the amount into the database. So every time somebody pays, the transaction happens and get the user's card is charged and at the same time we save we save the details in details our database using the post data to function which sends a post request to our database after this again that same two functions the op on create options menu which sets the menu and on, on options item selected for the two items want to go to the profile page or dashboard activity want to go to the home page or main activity okay now on the dashboard activity which is the profile we have first the on create which sets the activity dashboard xml and the google gso and the google sign in uh, client and then the google sign in account now we check if the account equals null if it is null it means uh, there is somebody not logged in. Not logged in. So we have to, uh, we cannot show the logout button. So we find out where the logout button is and set its visibility to gone. So they can't see a logout button. But if the user is signed in, so if account not equal to null, then we set uh, the logout button and we also always set the items button the list of items and if there is the logout button then we also set the on click listener on the logout button so whenever somebody presses so it listens to the on click and then it calls the sign out function okay so the sign out function is here so the sign out function logs out the user finishes the activity and then goes to the home main activity and here if there is another button called items button which will the show all the items so it, if you click that it will go to the home page and uh, show all the list of items so it goes to the main activity okay. so after this again there are two of these functions one is on create options menu which lays out the menu and the second is the on options item selected which has the two items, items. Uh, menu items, menu items and, uh, one for profile which is profile. dashboard activity and one, for main. one for home which is the main activity.